Hi, Supernaturals. It's Denise here with another one of my videos, okay? This one here, I'm asking you all to tell me what y'all think about black women, HIV and AIDS, and HPV in the community as far as natural hair is concerned. Now, first of all, I want to tell y'all a little background on this, okay? The background is that... Um, the Institute of Justice, they started going around the United States after they won the first case in Minnesota, which created the statute. They had been going around other states doing this braiding lawsuits. However, they would just get kicked out of court. The judge, Isabella Gomez, she enacted a state law, uh, law for the lawsuit. Now, here we have the Institute of Justice. This is their website. Now, they are, their argument is that it takes the African hair braiders 1,500 hours of government training to be enrolled and then fees of $1,000 or 90 days and all of these things. However, they also argue against occupational licensing across the board for the whole United States. So when they went in and did this civil court th uh, lawsuit this time for the hair braiders in Minnesota, Isabella Gomez recognized the hair braiders as a real industry, an up upcoming industry that could be an income source. So therefore, since the Board of Cosmetology wrongly accused these women of something that they did not teach, which was natural hair, because cosmetology teaches chemical hair processing, she permanently enjoined all of them, meaning she broke them all up. The cosmetology has to have a board. The barbers have to have a board. And the, since the herbators hadn't had enough of them, they couldn't get all three of them to say they were some form of association. She just created a registration, which was a permit, a pathway for them to use cosmetology. She recognized it. Along with recognizing that, she defined what her braiding was, okay? Now, let's go over here to the hair braiders board when she defined what it is. They then created a whole website. They created a hair braiders bulletin. They created the application, the providers list, the curriculum, and the court order. Now, in the court order, we go to the, the bulletin first, okay? In the bulletin, you will see what hair braiders can have, what kind of simple hair devices they can use, and when they can. Now, here is their background of what happened in 2005. Here is the court file, okay? Here is what the hair braiders have to do for is their registration. Here is the frequent asked questions. What is hair braiding? It's a natural form of manipulating scalps and all of this. It goes on to tell simple hair braiding devices, human hair extensions, moisturizers, oil, shampoos. You can have it all. You can have a full bone salon because you get to have clips, combs, curlers, curling irons, hair pins, rollers, scissors, needles, and thread. Okay? Now, if a hair braider can have gels, that's ponytails. Moisturizers can do hair, um, you know, moisturize the hair after, while it's uh, dry. Oils, pomades to do the braids. You can shampoo her to keep the hair clean and healthy. You get the clips, you get the combs, you get the curlers to roll the hair and style the hair. You get the curler irons to style the hair, the extensions that's included. Hair pins, rollers, scissors. Scissors is a main component too, but my biggest component is this needle. That's my argument because of cross pricking, okay, with the needle to the scalp while someone is uh, putting on extensions. Now, in this also, you also get to use car color. They're telling you you can't use penetrating chemicals. But if you're a cosmetologist, you know about depositing chemicals. De I mean, depositing uh, semi-permanents. So you can use semi-permanents and depositors like Beijing Blacks as well. So it crosses over into the barbering as well as all other services. 
Okay. Now, after we look at that, we're going to go over here and we're going to look at the actual that the judge enacted for her braiding because remember it's listed on this bulletin as well as it's listed within the board of cosmetology's uh portal for her braiders okay now on this particular um court order is from the judge Okay, Isabella Gomez. And if you scroll down the bottom, of course, in the beginning, it talks about all of the facts and findings and what her braiders was doing and why they were arguing that these hours was too much. And where she came up and found out that um, natural hair braiding was actually not being taught in the schools and um, that they were right and that they needed to have a. Uh, an exemption from the Board of Cosmetology, okay? Now, that means that they needed to be permanently enjoined and could not be one whole group. So here is her court order that she called it her court order in agreement with the Board of Cosmetology and all the Board of Cosmetology successors, meaning anyone that was working as the board of a cosmetology staff or member and came along and they now it's a new person has coming as their successor that successor has abide by this rule where it says she permanently enjoined right here oh i can't even link it but okay at the top right here as you can see she permanently enjoined and restrained them from it being included, the hair braid is being included in the cosmetology board agreement. So where you see these other states including the hair braiders in their cosmetology boards is really not supposed to be. Their the her cosmetology board is supposed to be separate. Therefore, the natural hair people should have their own board. Okay. Now, if you go on down, you will see what she created this, what her braiding means. Here's what her braiding means. It, it means braiding, corn rolling, extensions of fiber and uh, synthetic fibers and extensions in a variety of shapes. Okay. Her braiding is not just to natural hair braiding, it's to natural hair care as well it also includes customized wigs wigs from natural hair synthetic fibers and hair extensions okay so when they're saying it includes customized wig a wig is a hair and scalp prosthetic in the medical industry so it's included in here okay so then you have down here you have the colors penetrating chemicals you can't use however you can use depositing because she's only speaking to penetrating chemicals then here you'll see simple hair devices that's where that needle comes in this is the heart of why the board of cosmetology and the institute of justice are using black people to move forward with their uh, microdermabrasions and extension in the cosmetology industry for as um, advanced esthetician licensing and practices for themselves with Botox because they're going to use this needle. Because as you get down here and you get to more into what she says right here, she says her braiding simple her devices and her braiding services and her braiders are to be defined in the rule book. Okay, her braiding and her braiding services and her braiders or to be conscrewed as exempt from this rule. So you, you, the herbraters are exempt, the herbraters services are exempt, and the herbraters are exempt. However, up here she told them to make herbrating, simple her devices, her braiding services and her braiders be defined in the book. So in the book, she gave them the right to regulate simple her devices because she only exempted the other three, her braiding, her braiding services and her braiders. So, so this is how they're able to move forward with making their own um, practices and utilizing the needle to get more money out of the general fund. Now let's get to OSHA. 
OSHA is where you're going to find the bloodborne pathogens rule for occupational safety thing, safety and health administration. So OSHA should be saying something too. They should be speaking out against this. Oh no, you're going to get these needles to herbivores and they're going to go out into the community and nobody's going to track them and nothing is going to happen. Whereas here they have procedures for standards and a policy for what you need to do with bloodborne pathogens and cross pricks and needle exposure, okay? And the Institute of Justice, the Board of Cosmetology, the governor, no one is saying anything that quiet about this. So I thought I'd bring it to the community. Here you will see it shoves the disposable containers are inspected and maintained and replaced by. This is what someone should have in their salon. Sharp disposable. Sharp disposable to contain the needles that people are using and either cleaning them. Right here in the salon, people need to use some type of personal protective equipment. They're not using cakes. They're not using uh, heat guards. They're not using glove fingers, anything. Last but not least, I would like to also talk about state of New York is doing and why I'm in agreement with what the state of New York is doing. Now, the state of New York adopted the natural herb raiders and the natural herb raiders license, okay, with the, along through the Institute of Justice, but you don't see them fighting them as much. You know why you don't see them fighting the state of New York as much? Because they regulated it to 300 hours, okay? Now, let's look at the herb raiders application in the state of New York, all right? Okay, in the state of New York, we can get, that's the instructional flyer, we want to pick the, the guide for licensing center or a quick online application instruction flyer. However, we want to see the actual application. Let's look and see because they have one in PDF. Okay, this is the online licensing, licensing renewal application. Let's go back. Okay, because we want to get to the application in PDF. This is the application, appearance and having duplicate license registration. All forms are in Adobe PDF. Hmm. I don't see it, but I know that it's here. Okay. So. Here it is. In the state of New York, the cosmeto the the natural hairstylist has to go and get a doctor's appointment. Okay, and these are the states where they'll take the hair braiders registration. The New York, New York is only taking Pennsylvania's hair braiders registration for respirosity. That's another thing. All of these states have respirosity for for cosmetologists and other thing other uh, occupations for for is what i can see um the natural hair industry is not unified they're not accepting registrations from other states and there's no godfathering for some of these hair braiders so with that i'm going to end this video right now and i just want you all to let me know what you think um, about the needles being used in the natural hair industry and the blind deceptiveness that the Board of Cosmetology and the Institute of Justice is using to use the needles to advance white women with advanced microdermabrasia and Botox. They're using the needle, use the black people face to get the needle and won't fund their uh, ambitions to educate and um, you know, just build this industry out as natural hair. Thank you. And let me know what you think again. Bye.